So here are a few things you should remember about coding styles for your register resources. First of all, try to manage the number of control signals in your design. And as I mentioned, if you start instantiating cores or using older netlists, make sure that those control signals are shared with the rest of the logic you're building. All three control ports on the register can be used. To directly use the pins in the register, the priority, of course, must be reset, followed by set, followed by clock enable. Be careful to never gate your clock. It will simply not operate reliably. Instead, map this functionality to the clock enable port if possible. Do not build with an asynchronous reset. It will not operate reliably again, especially if it is local. Global asynchronous resets might work, but it might waste LUTs and create a long net delay, which is, of course, a big caveat to their use. Do not mix asynchronous and synchronous control signals on the same register. And do not use a global reset to make simulation easier. Simply initialize your registers in your HDL. The SRL allows you to emulate a 16-bit shift register with one LUT. The shift register LUT does not support the use of a set or reset. It is also serial in and serial out only. No parallel read or write. So don't expect to read the contents at one time. It is basically a delay element. After data is loaded into the SRL, the data appears in the output a number of clock cycles later, which you control. You should also remember that the dedicated flip-flop next to the LUT has a better clock to output time than the SRL. So consider adding this register if you need better performance. The initial contents of the SRL can be specified with the init attribute, or it will default to a zero initialization. The benefit of the SRL is that it saves users from having to add registers to balance a pipeline stage. Frequently, a designer will have to use registers merely to delay a data path so it balances with other data paths. A designer might end up using four registers on each bit of a 16-bit bus to balance a pipeline, for example, and that would normally require 64 flip-flops. But by using the SRL, a designer can instead use 16 LUTs to do the work of 64 flip-flops a nice saving of the dedicated resources. In this case, the connections to the LUT inputs assign the number of clock cycles of delay. And in this case, 0100 corresponds to 8. And that's attached to the address lines and will effectively make the LUT behave like a shift register with 8 clock cycles of delay. Synthesis tools such as XST will automatically use this feature as long as it is coded properly. So don't code for a set of reset functionality Otherwise, you'll infer the actual registers and not the SRL primitive. Here is some simple HDL showing 16-bit data being delayed by five clock stages, which would normally require 80 flip-flops for storage. But note that a global reset is being used. Uh-uh-uh. This will effectively prevent us from inferring the SRL, and we'll end up with 80 actual registers being wasted. If you remove the reset signal, it will use the SRL and you will save all those flip-flops. When we synthesized this with the reset, we got the following warning from XST. As you can see, it recommends removing the reset functionality if possible. So this will teach you to not read the warning messages provided by your toolset. So here are a few things you should remember about the coding styles for the shift register LUT. So the SRL, again, is an effective means of delaying a data path. It's not an actual shift register. But in its implementation, one LUT can perform the behavior of 16 flip-flops. Nice savings. The SRL supports clock enable and initialization of its contents. It does not support the use of a set or a reset. So if you code for a set or reset, you'll get a register implementation, and that will waste a good number of registers. So just keep in mind that if you're going to use the SRL, you don't need to use a global reset. The SRL is serial in, serial out. If you code for a parallel read, you will get a register implementation. But experiment with your synthesis tool to determine if it will give you a similar warning of what XST gives you. Of course, that may have changed. It's a little bit old. But still, it kind of points out to you that the warning is often worth reading. Well, we tried to provide a detailed summary of the most important coding tips we provided in this module. To infer the dedicated multiplexer resources, you will need to use a case statement in your HDL and verify with your schematic viewer whether it got inferred correctly. 
Also note with MUXs, if you plan to break a large multiplexer down into smaller sections in order to pipeline it, be sure to break it into 4 to 1 and 8 to 1 MUXs. All three control ports can be used on any register, but to directly use the pins, we must make sure we follow the priority of reset, before set, before clock enable. Do not mix asynchronous and synchronous control signals on the same register. We saw a good example of how that can suck up a bunch of LUT inputs. So in effect, it wastes a lot of your logic functionality. So be careful. And continue on with our summary. The SRL does not support set or reset. If you code for a set or reset, again, you'll get a register implementation, not the SRL primitive. And that'll waste registers. The SRL is serial in, serial out, so if you code for a parallel read or write, you'll get a register implementation again. Avoid global resets. If you cannot avoid global asynchronous resets, be aware that also using local synchronous reset will end up wasting LUT inputs. Local synchronous resets create a high fan out net. That can create timing problems, especially when there is also a global asynchronous reset. So always monitor your control signals and try to manage them. Well, there are lots of places to learn more about FPGAs, and they all start at support.xilinx.com. I want to point out that I referenced several white papers that you should utilize. They all provide more information on optimizing your design and HDL coding for the four input lookup table. To find these documents, go to support.xilinx.com and click on the documentation tab and enter the paper number beginning with its initials. So WP275, which stands for white paper 275, would be what you would enter and note there would be no space in it. Finally, we spoke about the Xilinx Unified Libraries Guide. It provides insight into the registers available to your designers for each device family. This will explain how to customize the initialization of the registers in your device and control signal priorities. So I recommend you check it out. I still find it very useful. Finally, don't forget to listen to part two of this REL series. There is still more to learn about using the best HDL coding techniques and taking full advantage of the FPG architecture. If you would like to see what other courses we offer or what other free RELs are available, click on the icon you see here. Again, my name is Frank Nelson, and you've been listening to the Spartan 3 Coding Techniques Part 1 REL. Thanks for listening.